The Singular Adventure of Glaucus I'm not supposed to remember any of this, thought Glaucus, as he closed his eyes to the rush of the cosmos around him, and into the sweeping black hole that would spit him out in the middle of a horrible war. He clasped Homer's hand a little tighter, and tried to sort out in his mind how the two of them had gotten in the, into this mess to begin with. They had been on a trip to the town of Sodom, because of a speaking engagement that Homer had secured. The Sodom Council of Arts, Theaters, and Orgies had come across with a large sum of gold, with promises of more on arrival. Homer just couldn't pass it up. Besides, he joked, it'll be nice to see some new scenery. They were on the road to Sodom, and they had met several drunken travelers who had just come from the city. They described it as the best good time since Uranus had, dis had discovered that that thing was used for something other than to pee with. Glaucus was tired of hiking the hot, dusty road, and wondered to himself how, how much farther it could be. From round the bend in the road, and obscured by cedar trees, he heard a merchant calling out his wares. Perfume! Wine! Wine here! Strong enough to give Bacchus himself a week-long hangover! Olive oil! You can cook with it, you can put it in your hair, softens your skin, and works great as a lube! Erotic urns and jugs! Dildos! Get your dildos here! Well, we've got to be close now, thought Glaucus. Homer stopped the slave boy and put a few coin, pulled a few coins from his purse. Go to the merchant and buy some skins of wine. It would not do for us to show up before the generous council empty-handed, he advised. Glaucus brought back the wine, but not before he took a few swigs, and they continued on towards the city gates. As they approached, Homer leaned into the boy's ear and whispered, I want you to keep a careful eye out, Glaucus. There are things here that you will never see anywhere else on earth. If you see something interesting, describe it to me in detail, as it might make for a good story later. Homer smiled at the thought. And keep close to me, he warned. They like cute little boys here. For servants? Glaucus asked innocently. Of a sort, lad, of a sort. Homer shook his head at, his, at the thought and tightened his grip on the boy's hand. As they stood in line to enter the fabled city, a gust of wind swept across the road, carrying with it a large cloud of dust. They coughed and sputtered, but then it cleared away as quickly as it had come, and in its place was a tall, slim youth wearing nothing but a winged cap and a mischievous smile. Scroll a gram for Homer! Scrollogram for a Mr. Homer, he called out to the crowd in general, even though he was looking right at them. Homer raised his staff. Here, young man, here I am, I'm Homer. The messenger strolled over and handed him a scroll. Homer handed it to Glaucus. Read it to me, boy. Forgive me, master, but it's all Greek to me, he confessed as he looked at the little squiggles. Mayhaps I might be of some help said the comely messenger, as he took the scroll back from the befuddled boy. He unrolled it to its full length and cleared his throat, <coughs> and in a lusty voice began, To the right honorable Omer, poet extraordinaire, your presence is required at the court of Zeus, father of the gods, lord of thunder and lightning, better of many maidens, seer of all, etc., etc. It goes on like this for a bit. Um, be at the top of Mount Olympus now, or, if possible, sooner. Signed, The Big Z. Homer looked very cross at the young man, or at least in his general direction. I have no time for this foolishness, he blustered. I am to see the council about a job, a well-paying job at that. Homer waved his staff about. Let me pass, you young trickster! Glaucus restrained him from cracking the svelte messenger in his shins. Master, he cried, it would not be wise to offend the gods. You have often told me so yourself, and though you know it not, the man before you has a winged cap and winged feet. Surely this can only be Hermes. Did we not make an offering to him at the temple before our journey to ensure our safety? And did we not arrive safe and sound? Oh, Goat shit, Homer muttered softly as he lowered his head. 
He turned to Hermes. All right, Speedy. Give me one good reason why I ought to go with you to Mount Olympus and not take the choice gig I've already got lined up inside. And don't give me that seas will swallow me whole and fire will rain from the sky bullshit, because I've heard it all before, and from better poets than you. Hermes shrugged. Because the feckin' place is scheduled for demolition. Some Hebrew god has added on the wipe clean listing for months now. He's just been waiting on the surveyors to turn in the report as they run into some trouble with a bloke named Lot or some such. You know, Big Z. He don't cross pantheons. Bad for business. Feck if I know, really. I just do what the Big C Z says. And he says, bring this here note to you and fetch you back. You want to risk your ride to the underworld? Feck if I'm going to stop you. Homer knew he had been trumped. All right, bird heels. You win. Take us now, please. Hermes smiled. He started with a light jog around them and rapidly picked up the pace, until he was nothing but a swirl of motion on every side. Soon they found themselves in a funnel of wind that lifted them off the ground and into the sky. Glaucus shook with fear and clung to the old man for dear life. Homer's laughter was swept away by the rush of air. When Glaucus opened his eyes again, they were standing on a shiny marble floor, that stretched into the craggy mountain tops and was hemmed with clouds and stars. Before them was a great golden throne, and lounging on it was a huge bearded man eating figs and scratching his balls absent-mindedly. <laughs>